All right, so we've picked up this six-way dozer blade. It's an Ersk, made by Erskine. And um, it's been sitting in a farmer's field for about six years. And it looks like when they did have it running, uh, they must have pulled away from it and ripped the cord off it, tried to repair the cord, and, um, and in doing so, it looks like a mouse had chewed through this. Um, I believe they wired everything incorrectly because it won't work at all. Um, the tilt and the angle blades um, need to function with a little solenoid down here on the bottom and it's controlled through this 14 pin connector. And we definitely have some problems here. Now what I've done is I've sprayed this all down with um, uh, chain lube and so forth to try to loosen things up because the rams have uh, rust on them uh, so we're going to try to clean them up and then these ball knuckles on the very end they're all rusted and we're basically solid weren't moving so we're going to put some uh, fluid on them and try to lube them up as well um, so let's kind of see what we need to do to get this baby working uh, I got up here and the dogs thought I was going to go for a ride in the tractor and they jumped right up in the tractor and uh, went for, wanted to go for a ride. What do you think, Nixie? Dylan? Huh? What do you think? What are you guys doing up there? Huh? What are you guys doing up there? You guys want a drink? Yeah? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Huh? What are you guys doing? Huh? This is Dylan and this is Nixie. They think they're going to go for a tractor ride. So, huh, guys? Yeah. All right. Okay. So, come on, guys. We'll get you a drink. Come on. Oops. Come on. <laughs> no, Missy. No. I can't fit in here. Go ahead. Come here, guys. Come on, Nixie. Come on, Nixie. Come here. Okay, we'll leave it up in the air a little because that'll let the water drain off. Okay, so go ahead and hit or hit the stop. Perfect, and come on out. Okay, now that we've got the cable, the 14 pin cable disconnected, let's see what we got here on the bottom. It looks like we have a red, green, and yellow cable that's mapped back to the 14 pin cable. And then on the bottom here, it's connected to electrical solenoid that actually triggers this valve up on top 
what direction the hydraulic is supposed to go, whether it's supposed to run the tilt or the angle. Um, they're sharing a common black lead and for this solenoid it looks like they had the orange trigger and when I was looking at the map diagram that's to the trigger on the right hand but we're going to have to look into that. This black one was definitely but there's the orange white or orange yellow. So this black one was definitely almost gone. No, it is gone. So that is our problem right here is this. So I'm not sure what these other ones are, so we can probably tape them off. But what we might be able to do is pull this off. So it's interesting, this black is connected to this yellow. And I pulled out a white. So I'm going to have to see how we can take this apart. And continue to the next step. Okay, so we had this sitting overnight. We put some stuff down inside of here. And what we're gonna try to do is loosen this top part. And I've got a big wrench here so that I can stabilize it. Actually, let's do it this way time out of here I cracked this outer piece but I think we can get some shrink tubing when we go to seal this at the end we can protect that because hopefully when I get done with this we won't have to replace this again and it'll just last. So I put a little crack in there, but the good news is, is it's apart now. So we can make that work. All right. We've got a connector there as well. connect this black lead see they've jumpered these so these are like jumpers with plugs in on the ends of them and then they um, use shrink tubing to seal that and that's how we'll fix this in here we'll do that same thing so we'll try their trick but we're just gonna hardwire this just to see that everything connects and is working correctly on the cable and go from there Okay, so some of the other problems we had with these is these were all like rusted rate solid. So I had them soaking in um, WD-40 and brake cleaner fluid. And these are now moving, which is good. And same with this. The, these ends were like all rusted rate right up, but I got them all cleaned off on the ends. And hopefully... They will connect into our machine okay. Now the only thing I'm I, I'm really yep. The only thing I'm really worried about is there's fluid in this system and I'm hoping it's not contaminated because that'll be that'll contaminate the fluid that's in this this existing machine already. So I was I had one of these ends off and I had oil coming right out so I think we're okay and I also had one of these ram pieces off um, as well so we're hoping uh, I think we're pretty good 
Okay, so we're going to screw this part on. And what I'm hoping is we can just diagnose we just need this black and orange to trigger that and hopefully that will make that work so we're going to remember we the end on this was in pretty rough shape so we cut this off and all we need is the orange and the black out of here we'll just temporarily tie these together and we'll know at that point if the little solenoid down in the bottom here which is switches between the tilt and the angle blade if that works correctly now I know they got special ends for doing all this but we're just kind of try to cut this right here Okay, so the next step here is to try each one of the triggers and buttons on the left and right control uh, arms. And no matter what I try, the tilt works by default, but I can't get any of the buttons to trigger through the 14 pin connector. So we're going to have to basically figure that out. Okay, so we've tested a couple of connections and we're still having a hard time trying to figure out which one it is. So when we were messing with this, we decided to hold the bottom trigger and toggle the button. As soon as we did that, we actually triggered a fault code. Now we don't have anything connected up on the outside, so we know it's not the pins. The fault code says it's a float switch sorted to power or uh, it was held longer than five seconds, which that could be highly possible because we're trying to test each one of the cables. But in the connections between each one of them, we discovered that uh, red wire that was in this existing 14-pin connector went to pin E, which is the left-hand controller upper right. And then we discovered the green wire uh, in the 14 pin connector, which was pin G, that is actually connected to the right hand controller uh, top button. Now we can't use that right hand controller because we use the thumb switch off the right hand controller. So what we're going to try to do is wire this up to the left hand controller red wire, uh, which is pin E. Now we'll hook up all the connections, the red, the white, and the green, uh, as well as the black. I think there was a gray cable as well. But we're going to hook up all of them uh, inside of there anyway so that we can toggle them or move them around on the bottom if, if a wire fails or something uh, towards the end. Okay, so now that we pretty much know what the pinouts are, um, we will go ahead and order a new 14 pin controller uh, and the pins that go into that and I've got some uh, diagrams to kind of show you that as well. Okay. Okay, try the bottom one. Try all the bottom. 
Okay, so now that we've pretty much figured out what goes to where we believe, we're just testing everything to make sure that is correct. And then I think we'll do another session on the fault code uh, with this right trigger because we know that it's in the machine that's causing the problem and it's not the connection on the outside. Then we also found a couple other areas where if you try to press the menu button on the main control area uh, as shown here those buttons don't work so we're going to have to swap out that little okay, menu so pad we but we'll save that for another session so in the meantime i think we're pretty close to figuring out what we need to do now what we're going to do is document everything uh, onto the phone snap a few photos and then we can get uh, the new connectors ordered and figured out from there. Okay, so we got our parts in and what I was able to do was find a new one of these ends uh, for the John Deere. And the nice part about it is I'm looking all over the internet and every place they want to sell these things um, with the pins and the remover. Which I'll have to go grab that in a second here. But to find all these things they wanted like $195 or $200. And I was able to find a place where I can get this whole kit, the pins and the remover and the inserter for the back of these. All of that for right around 30 bucks. Um, so I'll send a link in down below on where you can get these pieces, uh, which is kind of nice uh, to be able to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to solder. Um, this is the cable that actually came with it, and we had these ends. So we've got the red, yellow, black, looks like the black, and the green. So what we're going to do is we're going to hook these up uh, to these connectors. And we're going to review what we had on our phone as well, just so that we knew what the previous wiring was. And um, we're going to connect these up, so we'll probably connect like two or three of these to two or three different buttons on the machine. The problem is, is on my machine, the trigger is not working, so I'm going to have to replace that. But we're going to wire that up as if it was, and then as things go to change, I can just change these connectors uh, that go on the end of uh, the bottom. Okay, so let's get started here. Now this is the tool that goes inside of here. Um, and basically what you do is you put your piece inside of this and the back side of this is actually rubber. And you actually slide, push that in until it goes no farther. And then that allows you to pull these other connectors out. Uh, which is kind of nice. Now I'm going to leave this one connected the way it is because I can use it for diagnosing. And um, plus we can see what pin numbers go where uh, on this one to kind of hook this up. So they had a, this was the yellow that this particular unit had, had this set up for the ground. And that's what we're going to try to connect here. So and when we were mapping things out, we found out uh, is, let's see, um, under my notes. So I had the green and the red, the green and the red here. There's a green and red here. So we're going to hook up the green and red on here. And then this green um, orange one was the one that went to the trigger. So we're going to put an end on the green, the red, and the orange. So let's just cut. Um, Okay, I've got these both 
crimped on here and soldered, so we shouldn't have a problem. And on the other end, they already have these ends, so they have a red, uh, an orange, orange white, orange yellow, that's this one, a green and a black, and a white, excuse me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook those up, and what's kind of nice about this connector, it's rather unique, and before you put these ends on, This piece goes in here like this to weather seal it. And then this connector goes like this. And then they go on the outside. So you wanna make sure that you get these slid in first. Like so. And then what's rather unique about these things is it's actually fairly easy to install with this connector because you just slide it in all the way. What I'm not quite sure though is if I have, I'm gonna have to cut this back a little bit. They basically have letters on each one of these and they had all of these wired up, but we don't have to do that because we're not gonna use all of these. So yeah, they, a lot of these they had capped off, like the purple and blue and stuff and gray. But now that we got our own ends, we're only gonna wire in the basics uh, for each one of these. And And they had the ground go into A. So there's the ground, which is on that side. So we're going to take the black and go into A, which is right here. And to slide them in, it's actually fairly simple. A is connected so it's very easy to put it together but to pull it out it does not pull out easy at all so there's where you have to use this uh, tool sorry about that Dylan tool to disconnect them and then the red which we discovered the red to be the one button Let's see, the red we discovered is the left handle top right. So the red is the left handle top right. And our diagram for the red goes into E. And if I look where E is, And when you slide it in, you can actually hear it snap into place. The back side is actually rubber. So when it connects, it actually snaps in and shows. And now if I look at the front, the back side so there's a yep and I just heard snap okay and then the orange one goes just below that one Now, the, the other unit that I had, that one was totally wired wrong. So somebody tried to play with it and literally had this stuff going the wrong, going the wrong way. 
So, and I could see where it could easily happen because this can get backwards. The diagram that they have, there we go. So you can kind of see so far, these are the connectors that we're just using on the bottom. And then the white one goes right next to it. So we have the white, orange, green down here. So if any one of these fail, we can switch them to different areas of the buttons. And the way it's supposed to work is the orange one was the trigger on the John Deere, but unfortunately, I believe the trigger on the John Deere is faulty because it's sending me an error code. So now I can pretty much have my choice on what button that I want to use by doing it this way. So we're just going to get a little a little creative when we go to do this. Really nice connectors, but because they're so unique, they are not cheap, but Digi DigiKey was where I bought these from. You can buy them online from them. And for only paying, you know, 30 to $40 max, including shipping. What a huge difference from $150 in $225 in some places, which is just crazy. Okay. So those are the connectors that we have connected. To these four so this is a universal um, I didn't try buying any of these replacement wires but I'm gonna leave this as a leave it open like this and use it as a breakout next time matter of fact I might put some different ends on it so it's just a little easier to test why things are working but I think we got it so let's go give it a try and we're going to try to hook this up to my left handle because the right handle is where I would control it. So we'll hook up the red to the left handle top right. So we're going to hook up the red connector, which is there, to the bottom of our piece. Okay, so basically under here is a little solenoid that trips a valve so that it can go to either the angle blade or the tilt. So we've opted to go with the red connector from what we mapped out earlier, which is this one. So the other connectors, they just have floating loose inside. So we have the orange or yellow. Here's the red. Okay, now they had these other connectors just kind of floating, but I think what I'll do is when we make sure that this is all working, we will leave, we'll tape them off and put in a little box or something um, so they don't get all corroded up. Okay, so 
I got it hooked to the left trigger so that way when I hold down on the left trigger and I toggle with my thumb that'll run the angle blade and it looks like we got everything working so now what we're going to do is zip tie everything all back up make it nice and secure inside of there and we'll hook it up and go try it out We pretty much got that much fixed but some of the other problems we have is these end knuckles here on the very end were all rusted up so I had them soaking in some grease and some chain lube and then on here there's rust on this area so we're gonna do is spray them down a little bit more um, what I'm just over time what will end up happening is it'll kill the seals in there but I'm hoping we'll be able to lube them up enough to be able to make that work the one thing about the shorter blades is that if you go to do angle blades like this um, I wish the blade was much longer because as you can see when you go to look at it this side is past the track so that works out pretty good however over on this side it is not so this is only a 7 8 78 inch blade if you had a 96 inch blade it'd be much better because it would be by the end of the blade and uh, your track uh, would clear now they sell end wings but that's not going to help in this particular case but um, it is what it is uh, in reference to this type of angle blade, but um, you know, with the wide track on the skid steer, you know, that could kind of mess up some of the grade to try to do. Now, the other thing that's kind of nice about this too is the assembly up on top here um, also has a grader attachment. So you get a grader wheel out front uh, to be able to grade with it. So it'd be interesting to try that, but again, you really need the long blade in order to do that it'd be kind of nice to buy a section of this and bolt this on out here but i just don't know how strong um, it would be because i'm sure um, there'd be a lot of force on it um, if we went to do something like that but um, so let's work on trying to lube up these rams and maybe get some of the the uh, rust off those rams. Okay, so that's the rebuild of the six way dozer blade from Erskine. So I think we got her working. Not exactly as I want, but we discovered a little problem with the skidster, uh, but we'll work on trying to get that fixed too. So, if you like what you see, be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button. I'll leave in the definition down below where I got uh, the 14-pin uh, connector for the John Deere and all the components to put that together. Okay, so now that we got this thing all working, let's get her hooked up and test her out on a job. Okay.